everyone and welcome to today's video. As part of data cleaning, we many times have to handle messy data. Today we are going to write a SQL query to handle one such scenario of overlapping data records. In our example of the DIM employee table, we have some overlapping date records for the employee IDs. If we take a closer look at employee ID 1, we can see that the end date of the first record is greater than the start date of the next date record. And the same is true for the second and third records as well. So what we're going to do is merge these overlapping date records so that we end up with a distinct and non-overlapping range of dates. Now there are different approaches that can help you solve this scenario. So step one would be identifying the overlapping records and we are going to make use of the lag function, the windows function to identify overlapping records. So I'm going to use a case statement and when the start date of my current record is less than or equal to the end date of the previous record. So we can identify the end date of the previous record by using the lag function end date and since this is a windows function, we have to use the over clause define a partition, which is going to be the employee ID. And then we have to order by the start date. So if this condition is true, that start date of the current record is less than the end date of the previous record, then it is an overlapping record. Now what we're trying to do here is identify the ranges. For example, in case of employee ID 1, these three records are continuously overlapping. So the first record for a range is going to be this record, which doesn't have a previous overlapping record. And the last record for a range is going to be this third record. So we are going to identify the start of our range, which is going to be a record that doesn't have a previously overlapping record. So if it is an overlapping record, the same range is going to continue. So here we are identifying the range and I'm going to assign it a value of zero. So if it is an overlapping record, say zero. If it is not an overlapping record, means it's a new series that is starting, new date range that is starting, then we will give it a value of one. So every new date range will be identified by a value of one. Let's say and as date range. Now let's just execute this part of our query till now to understand what are the results. So you will observe that every time a distinct date range starts, you have a value of one here. And when the next date ranges are overlapping or continuous date ranges, then you have a value of zero. Now another date range started here, the employee ID also changed. So it has a value of one. Now this record and the next record are overlapping records, so the date range becomes zero. And when you go to the next record again, it is a new distinct range. So it's not an overlapping range with the previous record. So you have a distinct range value of one. So here now what we have achieved so far is identifying the date ranges and where a new distinct range starts. Now we're going to put all this code in a CTE because we need the results from this query to calculate to do our step two. So with CTE underscore date range as. So you have the CTE here. Now the next part that we're going to do is going to identify the range groups. So all overlapping date ranges, continuous overlapping date ranges are going to be identified by a range group number now. So now what we're going to do is simply select everything from the CTE, so all of this data, and then we are going to do a sum on this date range that we calculated. Again, you have to define your partition by employee ID and order by start date. And you can call it as, or you can just call it as the group from the CTE that we defined above. The CTE is called CTE date range. 
So let's correct the spelling of partition here. So now we have this. What we have done is simply we have done a sum on this date range and it is going to give us a running total amount over here. So let's see what are the results. So, I so now what we see is that for every partition, so every partition is based on employee ID. So these are, uh, this is our first partition, let's say. Every time you have overlapping date ranges, you get the same group ID. So basically these three records are the same distinct date range. So we can merge them into a single record having the start date of 1-1-2023 and end date of 31-12-9999. So you have the same group IDs for all these three records. Now going to our second partition, the second employee ID, as we can see over here, it has got two distinct groups. So the first group are these two overlapping records. So these can be merged as a single record and they have the same group ID. And the next distinct range has got another group number. So now we have identified the group ranges. So all the overlapping date records, overlapping date ranges have been identified as the same group. Within the same partition, you can have multiple groups and each of these groups is going to result in a distinct date range. Now, since we are going to write the final query on top of this, we are again going to contain this in another CTE. So another CTE, you do not need to repeat the with keyword. You can just do a comma and give the CTE range. So let's call it CTE group. As and put this within brackets. So now we have all these results and what we want as a final output is going to be employee ID and the final start date and the end dates. So the final start date would be the minimum of the start date in the same group. So I'm just going to call it start date and the end date would be the maximum of the end date in that group. from the CTE that we just defined, so CTE group. And then we need to group by employee ID and the group. Now, if you execute, you will have your distinct date ranges. So the overlapping date ranges have been merged into distinct date ranges. So this is not as complicated as it sounds. It's a simple three step process. And step number one, we identify the overlapping records using the lag windows function. Step two, we identify the groups of overlapping date ranges or distinct date ranges. So all the overlapping date records ended up being the same group. Then we just found the minimum start date and the maximum end date from within that group to come up with a distinct date range.